introduce someone who I feel is uh, just an inspiration to me. I, I call her master, which she hates, but it's the truth. She is a master and an enlightened being and a great poet. So uh, please, everybody, welcome and meet the remarkable Joan Sutcliffe. Wonderful to see you. Thank you. Since when? <laughs> oh, well, after the two of Honey and uh, Ruth, I, I feel really quite humble. In spite of what Honey says, my poetry is not. <laughs> and I haven't done a lot this um, this last year, to be honest with you. Um, because, I, because of the COVID and because I started to write a novel, um, when you're doing prose, you get away from poetry. Anyway, I've, I've dished up a couple. Um, okay. Um, this, this first one's one actually I wrote quite a while ago. And <clears throat> it was when I was interested in Buddhism. Well, I still are, am actually, but uh, they, they have that idea of who are you? You're not who you think you are. And that's sort of the poem. <clears throat> who are you? Who are you? Who really are you? Deep down inside. Not the pubescent boy with flambeauting shoulders. Not the purple-hatted grandmother with tigress eyes. Not even the master of philosophical finesse who sits in the cemetery of departed successes. But who are you? In the core of your iridescence, behind the mirror of transformations that shoots its image from reflecting glass to reflecting glass. To pose in the multi-layered jacket that wraps itself tight against winds of ever-changing whims. To assert in moral confidence, I am I. But who are you, that eternal presence, which has no name, beyond the knower of concept and thought, beyond the sting of memories, drawing together the highlighting moments into a single breath of illusion that says, I am I. Who is the real you, the ultimate awareness aware within, the wearer of the dragon mask in the grotesque dance of imagination that creates its world of erudition to become just a, a a play in someone else's dream. Who is the you that is the watcher, silent, equanimous, unmoved by pain, unmoved by passion or pleasure? Perhaps, just perhaps, the you you are looking for is that which is doing the looking. I'm sorry, I'm going to read my glasses. I haven't read these for a long time and I'm a bit rusty. Uh, oh, this next one's a rhyming poem, uh, which I did write quite recently. I called it The Good Old Boy. The terrain was rugged, wild and tough. Bruised and aching, my body felt rough. A hollowed rock served to rest my feet and a stranger came to share the seat. Conversation flowed like river to canal, sometimes stimulating, sometimes banal. His face was neither remarkable nor bad. He spoke with a lilt, a cadence went sad. I saw him often over the years and got to know his strengths and fears. We took many a long and challenging walk. At times he was moody and didn't talk. We met with a hug and left with a kiss. A kindly disposition was his. Quick to help and slow to anger, free from scorn and free from rancor. One day he left and went on his way. I've no idea where he is today. Someone told me his name was Roy, but I only knew him as a good old boy. Is, is 
came from a, a memory um, which I didn't appreciate at the time when I was young. Um, it's something I've sort of regretted actually. I called it We Didn't Ask Why. Do I really believe in the innocence of those long ago days? when increasing light stole into evening dusk and early snowdrops peered the hearth earth. Those were the times when we were fired up by John Osborne's look back in anger and James Dean in rebel without a cause, a world simmering on the brink. One of us was retreating deeper, ever deeper, into the darkness of despair. We were too full of Roy Orbison Moon River and Joan Baez. Political rallies and moods of change, street marches to ban the bomb. He was the lonely, only the lonely, slipping away quietly into the forgotten until one morning he didn't wake up and none of us ever asked why. This next one is uh, called The Blues. Um, it's about a saxophone player I used to see on the street. Brilliant yellow light wraps itself jealously around the writhing body of the lean and sinewy young man, twisting with the subtlety of a serpent to the seductive somber tones of his saxophone. Sonorous, deep, melancholy, like the plaintive cooing of a morning dove, the alluring melody plays in subtle chase of itself through soul-rending loops of intoxication. He is beautiful, in peacock blue tights and with gold lame vest, dark-eyed and spelt, an outcast escaped from the ghettos, progeny of a long-ago slave trade, or perhaps not so long ago, now a street artist, the midday sun fondly caresses, glistening olive skin of a lovely face, doomed to grow old before its time. A musical progeny with talent to grace the finest of concert halls, but only a perceptive passerby will stop long enough to bestow a patronizing bravo and casually drop a coin at his feet. This is one I wrote a while ago as well. Um, it was at the time when um, there was a lot of oil spills and um, everybody, you know, we were up in arms, animals were getting hurt, and, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we, uh, anyway, I think though, because of what we're doing to the earth right now, I think it's still fitting actually with the times. It's called it Ecological Pain. And it's written from the perspective of a bird, actually. Have you inkling of my loneliness? My cry has crossed oceans, circled a cresting wave and dipped the trough to throw its echo into passing time. There is none left to answer me now. I am last of my line <clears throat> and solitary as sunset. My species have all died in torpid waters, oil blackened and thick, wings heavy caved, unable to lift, dragged down to sink in the sludge. The spreading scourge of poisoned air has captured colony after colony, breath torn from lungs bursting to exhaustion. Oozing grease has tainted the coast till shorebirds lost instinct to wade and landlocked perished in starving deprivation. 
O oh, tragic world, unknown now in your pristine beauty. No black-browed albatross will again stretch dark wings o'er the gleaming seas. No silver heron carve its jagged flight to expansive blue of an unblemished sky. No long-necked curlew sends its pathway to enter the shallows of throbbing tides. To save you, I'd have thrown, flown the earth seeking the last drop of water still pure enough to give life. So thank you very much.